building. This is a store. This is a... Good heavens, what is it? Oh, but of course, this is Buster Keaton. Out of this world. I know, I'd have had to, if I hadn't have broke that front window last week and had to pay for that. Oh, I know it ain't any kind of the money, Uncle Buster. But I told the boys that you were a millionaire, like you told me. Well, don't worry, we will get it some way. Oh, uh, I'm going on a fishing trip, and I'll need some equipment. Yes, sir. The gentleman would like some fishing equipment. Oh, there's... you have flies. I haven't noticed any. Fishing flies, you fool. Oh, oh. Oh, yes, we have a beautiful assortment. Uh, I'll also need a fishing pole. Oh, pole. Have you seen our new plastic? Oh, I got one here I demonstrate with us. Look. This, this is the last word. Just look at that whip on that. Now watch. See? It's guaranteed. There you are, guaranteed. I'll take it. A little unusual, I guess. Where, where, where do you intend to go, Fisher? You, you know, I know a dandy place that's up around June Lake. We were up there last year and we had... We had more lunch for you. Not the fish, you fool, the pole! Oh, for the pole? I'll do it right this time, huh? Just as it is. You're camping out, sir? Well, isn't that the usual place to camp? Yes. Uh, well, we have just the thing for you, sir. We have our famous one-man tent. Oh, but there are four of us going. No, 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 no. You don't understand. It sleeps four, but it takes only one man to put it together. Why, only last week we had a 75-year-old lady from Pasadena who put it together in just 20 seconds. Any moron can do it. Prove it. I'll read you the instructions just to prove to you how simple it really is. There, number one, sink the pole six inches into the ground.
rifle, spread your arms into the canvas pockets near the top of the tent. Three, raise the tent as you would an umbrella. Four, hammer the tent stocks into the ground. Five, tie the guy rope, and the tent is now ready for your comfort. Good. I'll be with you in just a moment, gentlemen. Now, we're going to prove we can put up this tent in just 20 seconds. Aren't we, BK? <laughs> we're demonstrating a one-man tent. Would you care to watch? By Joe, rather. What? How do you do? be as bad as you think. You'll be all right, don't worry. Hi, boys. I'm Bill Brown with The Times. I've been looking for you two all over town to get some publicity stills. I'll need um, individual pictures of Lord Blair's and you, Great Scott. Sure, I'll Bill. take you first. Sure, Bill. Anything for uh, my loyal public. Okay, stand right over here. Come on, pull them up. Yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah, swell. Two unknown clerks have actually challenged you to a match. 
Boss. Gentlemen, let's don't be rash. Next well, you are very indignant and want revenge. And you, my lord, want satisfaction. I'll, I'll kill him. Yes, but let's do it legally in the ring, old chap. Yes, it's too messy for the store. <laughs> well, I'm going home. No, no, you're not. I'm not going to stay here. Just think of the great publicity I'll get for you. Your name will be in every newspaper in the country. In the obituary column. Yes, no. We'll bury you in one of our brand new football uniforms. Make it a baseball uniform. All right, a baseball uniform. With spikes? Yes. A Dodger uniform? Yes. With a catcher's mitt? Yes. I won't do it. No! Gentlemen, gentlemen, we're wasting time. Here are the contracts. Sign here. I won't do it. You get a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? A hundred dollars. Even if we lose? Even if you lose, and I'm sure you will. A hundred dollars. We'll do it. Belong to Buster. They'll kill you. Look, this is not like a prize fight where you have to get your ears knocked off. This is a wrestling match. All I do with the minute he puts his hands on me, I just lay down nice and quiet, go to sleep. The referee counts me out, and we got a hundred bucks. It's easy. I won't struggle. I just give up. Later, old boy. Later. I... Sign it. Well. I'll, I'll go on home now, and I'll see you. Gentlemen, gentlemen, ah! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ed Rymers of the Times at ringside of the arena to cover one of the most unusual bouts in wrestling history. I'm referring, of course, to the widely publicized grudge tag team match tonight between the great Scott and Lord Blears on one hand, who are taking on those two courageous clerks, Buster Keaton and Slugger Jones. And in just a few moments, we're going to see just why it is that these two little men had the temerity to accept these terms here in the arena tonight to enter the ring with two such widely known wrestling personalities as Great Scott and Lord Blear. Do these little men have a secret hold? Do they have a secret weapon of some sort? In just a few moments, when they enter the ring, we'll find out the why of tonight. There's a tremendous crowd gathered here in the arena tonight. In the meantime, we're expecting momentarily the advance guard of Great Scott and Lord Blears tonight. Yes, as expected, here's Captain Holmes and Great Scott. Rather than being seconded by a man Friday, a Great Scott seems to have made certainly not a better choice, uh, a more charming one at least. Yes, they're climbing into the ring now. And they're getting already the plush carpets are going to be rolled out a little later. Uh, these two may be expecting dirty work tonight in some sense and are doing everything to prevent it. Uh, Captain Holmes is dusting off the Louis Kaz chairs. Couture's Kaz, well, he's dusting them off, uh, whatever. Uh, the young lady, great Scott's all-girl second, is uh, going to work with a squirt gun, a flip gun, and uh, making sure that all the ropes, Captain Holmes is uh, brushing off a little of the dust. Uh, if germ warfare might be uh, one of the Keaton Jones combination secret weapons, it certainly will avail them very little tonight. And now we may be expecting the arrival of their majesties. The red flush carpets are being rolled out. And any minute now, we will have the arrival of Lord Blears and Great Scott. to await the arrival of their opponents in this tag team match tonight. And now here comes the advance. <laughs> and Slugger Jones. And they climb into the ring. And folks, to add a bit of color and dash, Keaton and Jones have come into the ring wearing the uniforms of Roman gladiators, armor, swords, and all. They acknowledge the applause of the crowd. They're standing on those same plush carpets. Captain Holmes and Great Scott's girl They may not like this. 
Keaton and Jones are getting back on their feet, getting back into the ring. This armor is encumbering them a little bit. But speaking of this armor, this may be the secret weapon of which we spoke a few moments ago. This may be the reason these two little Davids would dare to challenge, even dare to meet, two Goliaths in the person of Great Scott and Lord Blear. Lord Blears and Great Scott are being served tea in their corner. And our Great Scott gets up to leave for just a moment. But Lord Blears is not going to be alone for very long. Buster Keaton comes wandering over into the corner to see what's going on. He's looking over Captain Holmes' shoulder as Captain Holmes serves Lord Blears his tea. And now, he's going even further, friends. Ladies and gentlemen, Buster Keaton, in addition to joining Lord Blears in his corner, has become an uninvited guest and reaches, reaches over onto the tray and takes a cup of tea and Captain Holmes doesn't care for this one little bit. Buster Keaton is going over to join Lord Blears at tea. He has the temerity to toast him. He not only joins Lord Blears in tea, he joins Lord Blears and tea. He's still on that, that beautiful road and Captain Holmes and Lord Blears don't care for that one little bit. Buster Keaton may pay for this when this wrestling match gets underway. You just wait and see. And now Great Scott is taking those golden bobby pins out of his long blonde hair and tossing them out to the crowd as souvenirs. And Slugger Jones, Slugger Jones has taken one of those souvenirs. And Great Scott doesn't care for that. These two little men have aroused the ire of these two Goliaths they're meeting tonight. And now here comes the referee just stepping into the ring. He seems to be puzzled by something. Yes, he's taking that. He's insisting that Buster Keaton dispense with his team and his spear. Another fighting over in the middle of the ring. And Buster Keaton is a policeman. And he does now anyway. And that's what happened to Lord Blair. Buster Keaton taking his spear away from Buster Keaton. And the policeman is leaving the ring. Well, he seems to be missing something. He's lost his billy club, and I think that maybe, yes, is the one who took that billy club as the policeman climbed out of the ring. And now the referee, the referee is going to take the sword away from Slugger. Yes, he does, and gets it. Great Scott Girl Friday in a very trim full Nelson. And now Buster, I think, is up to something. Yes, he sees the sword, and he's going to put it on. Buster Keaton is putting on Slugger's sword, but I think that rather than a weapon, he wants one of those, one of those full Nelson. That's what Buster wants, and he's getting it. But he's getting it from Captain Holmes. And the referee takes the sword away, and he seems to be just a little bit disappointed. And both teams are now going back to their corners, and in just a moment, All right, we're going to be with Here's the referee coming to the middle of the ring. I don't care how they lose. Back to your corners, man. Well, from our position at ringside, folks, we couldn't quite hear what the referee was telling the two teams, but one thing you can be sure of, we're going to see a fair match here tonight. We see a great deal of ceremony attached to the uh, undressing formalities, which must be attended to before the match gets underway. We're seeing, well, Buster was having a little trouble up there. And now, over in the other corner, Lord Blears and Great Scott are folding these magnificent robes of theirs and handing them to their seconds, who in turn place them tenderly outside the ring. Over on the other side, not to be outdone, you should see Buster Keaton and Slugger Jones going through the very same formalities, getting rid of these gladiators' uniforms they've worn into this ring tonight. Lord Blears is just finishing. He is just about ready for combat. And uh, over on the other side of the ring, Buster Keaton is getting out of his tunic. And as Lord Blears and Great Scott were ten to two, Buster Keaton and Slugger Jones tenderly fold their uniforms, pass them to their attendant, who in turn places them daintily outside the ring. <laughs> well, this great match is about to begin. Again, this great audience is tense with expectation. All right. And the teams have been chosen. Slugger Jones goes out of the ring, and Great Scott has gone out, leaving Buster Keaton to face Lord Blears. There goes the bell for the start of this match, friends. And oh, well, the clerks have gone first, but as Lord Blears came rushing across the ring and fell over on the apron and completely out of the ring. Buster Keaton is trying to get back out of the ring. Aided by one policeman, is helping him stay back in here to face Lord Blears again as he crawls back up in the apron before the elapsed time and enters the ring once more. He's a little shaken. He's going over to the ring. Yes, he's touching Great Scott, and Great Scott is coming into the ring. Buster has given Slugger Jones the, the nod, and now the second team is in there. He's bouncing around. He thinks this is a prize fight, perhaps, but he's going to learn just a little bit different in just a minute. There's a slam. 
Oh, he's getting pulled. The man of the flag of Great Scott is going to work on Slugger Jones. He's up, he's up, and he's down, he's down, he's up. This is happening very rapidly, friends. I wish you were here to watch it. Up and down and up and down. He's taking off the beat again. Now, how much longer I can stand? Now, he's going around in an airplane spin. Great Scott has Slugger Jones in an airplane spin around and around and around. He's going and down on the canvas. Slugger Jones. And he's taking an awful beating here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And Great Scott isn't going to let him get away with it. There he's twisting about the neck. He has him over in his stomach. And up and down. Here's a lift and a punch. Your homes and your radio sets. Slugger Jones is taking an awful beating here tonight in this tag team match between Slugger Jones and Buster Keaton and Lord Blears and Great Scott. And there, oh, a twist on that, a step over a toe hole, ladies and gentlemen, and he's really putting the pressure on, and I don't know how much longer Slugger Jones can last. I don't know how much longer I can last. I don't know whether I'll be able to take hold of this money or not. I'm the fool. Give up, give up. Oh, sleepy. I'm breaking my leg. Tell him to quit. 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 He's trying to be of some help to his partner, and he's pulled inside the ring. And now both Slugger Jones and Buster Keaton are, well, they were just a minute ago, but Buster rolled back out to safety. And Slugger Jones now is out on the apron, holding his leg, and certainly deservedly so. He was taking a tremendous beating in there just now at the hands of Great Scott. And now the tag is on, and Buster Keaton is going back in to see what he can do. Now he's stalking Great Scott, but Great Scott in turn is stalking him. Buster can't see behind him. But Great Scott knows every minute just where Buster Keaton is. He turns around and finds him, and now he's outside the ring. Buster, is that? Well, Buster comes up to the ropes, ladies and gentlemen, and tags Slugger Jones. And Slugger Jones has passed out. Has Buster used the secret weapon on the wrong man? Buster Keaton is inside the ring, out of a choice of his own. But Great Scott, Great Scott is after Buster Keaton, and he's taking the same kind of a beating that Slugger Jones was a moment ago. He's up, and there's the bell at the end of round one. Bell. Round one. But they don't have bells in wrestling matches. Is everybody around here tonight crazy? I think even the referee is being a little bit disturbed by it. Wait a minute. Who rang that bell? You don't wrestle with the round. This is a one-hour time limit. Now, come on, get out of here. Yes, there it is. The referee has ordered them both to come out and fight. Now, Buster Keaton is trying to dodge around the ring. He's trying to get away from Grace Scott. They're running around the ring. I don't know how much of this I can stand, ladies and gentlemen. They're running around and around. I can't even follow them. The tag is off. He's in. He's out. He's up. He's down. 